I'm a record producer, I'm a songwriter, I'm a performing artist, I'm a radio show host, I'm a manager, I'm a music consultant, I write books. We didn't have what you all have, which was all the information in front of you, and these types of discussions where somebody can tell you. So we could say, you know, I didn't know any better, because we didn't. Well, you, you guys get to know better, so you, you have to do better. Mm, yeah, I recall that even during that time, 85, 86, there were really only three or four books written about the industry. This Business of Music was a classic. Um, uh, I think it was Krasilovsky, um, but there weren't a lot of books. It wasn't the internet, the preponderance of information that we have on the internet now. So a lot of people have access to the information. Why aren't they using it? Because it's gotten so easy to be, to participate in the music business. Um, that a lot of people think they're really in the business when they're not. Mm. It's like a guy playing basketball on the playground, but they pretend <laughs> like they're in the NBA, you know, but they're really not. But you can tell the difference in the NBA. Right. See, in our business, you really can't tell because the same platform that I'm on, they can be on. They can be on YouTube. Mm. They can be on iTunes. Mm. You know, Michael Jackson is on iTunes. Ah. So the idea that, you, that you're in the music business but you're really not. You guys gotta understand one thing. There's 313 million people in the United States of America. Formula for the music business. They wanna to sell to one third of 1% of the population of the United States. If they do that, they sell a million albums. One third of 1% of the population it's what they're looking mm. to call the reaction from that will bring, make an impulse happen to buy a CD or a download of an album. Mm. And that makes a million. <laughs> when you got 5,000 Facebook friends, 20,000 Twitter followers, 2,000 text messages in your thing, and you, you start adding up all the people, I'll give you a million. I'm going to give them to you, all, of, all that little fake stuff you did with uh, populating your pages and stuff like that. Right. <laughs> that, you, that you start, now you're fooling yourself. Now you're lying to yourself about how many people really are following you, how many really are reacting to you and know you. Multiply one third of one percent and look at yourselves. It seems like the ego would deflate a little bit at that point, right? It seems, <laughs> but it don't. No. So you were able to leverage your passion in very pragmatic terms, which led to you being able to parlay your success into the fortune that you now have. In this day and age, and there are many stories um, that people, at least I'm hoping that a lot of people know their history, uh, in that particular era, I want to say 80 to 94, 80, 92, there are a lot of stories of people who had similar stories about uh, the independent route mm -hmm. and peddling records and the, the, the ability to go and develop relationships. In this day and age, with things being so digital, and sometimes digital feels like it's humanless, what would be your advice to people who understand that you can do it on an independent level, but at the same time, forging those relationships, you got in people's face, you talked to the DJ, you gave him, you know, you paid him to spin a record, you watched people on the dance floor. Now we're dealing with these global networks and the songs just sometimes to the artists, they just feel like they're out there. They're passionate, but then they're not seeing the manifestation of that passion. What would be your advice to them? You gotta, you gotta have a plan, 
a lot of you all are flying by the seat of your pants. You just go out there and you just do it and you think, well, it's out there, you know, everybody can hear it. Everybody can't hear it. Most people don't even know you are even out there because that's how big the internet is. But if you have a plan, if you go and reach and you connect with your, with your people, with the people that, that are there for you that love your music, because what the, the beautiful thing about the internet is the internet now takes all the mystery away. So you get to know if it's a, uh, the majority of your audience, if they're male or female, they're black or white, if they're young or old. You get, you get to know a lot about them, and then you get to interact with them. And you, and you get to make the relationship. Mm. The internet is a wonderful thing, and digital is a wonderful thing, um, because it allows you to reach out and touch a lot of people. Mm. But there's still a local thing in front of you. There's still people you still have to make that, that genuine connection. Okay. Because people got to know that the person they're working for, the person that they're working with, the person that they're supporting, is a real person that really appreciates and is thankful for the effort being put out. There, there's something that I want to interject with here, Jay, and I see this especially uh, being a professor at San Francisco State University. I have a lot of students that come to the music recording industry program and they want to dibble and dabble in a lot of different things. So I, I want to make sure that we're clear on when you're talking about hyphenating one of the things that I see in your list of hyphens, entrepreneur, author, entertainer, songwriter, producer, you know, owner of your own media network, one of the things that I, I notice when I look at your track record is that you didn't just dabble, you did things thoroughly. Absolutely. You achieved success in one area or in one endeavor before moving on to the next. You have to. Um. I've been doing this for 26 years, guys. Every mistake you're about to make, I made twice. The difference is, I could be 30 at that time and make a mistake. You can't. I was 24 when my success happened. At 24, you all are considered almost too old. too old. And speaking of getting lazy, let's talk about some of the things that, uh, some of the mistakes you made, uh, starting with developing the relationships, going out and actually touching people. What you've seen in your experiences in terms of the relationships that people don't nurture that they should, and who are these individuals that they, they should pursue relationships with? Well, I gotta say, you know, if, if anything, um, when it came to building relationships, that's what I was great at. Um, I've never drank, I've never smoked, I've never done any kind of drugs. I've been completely coherent in my career from beginning to right now. But there's this drug called ego. And um, the person that says, I would never do anything like that is the person I'm worried about the most. Because we all have ego. There's nothing, nothing wrong with ego because you got to have that to drive you in this business. But having that ego in control and in check has to be job one for you. And while I was cool with regular folk, with the music business, I, I brought so much anger, um, resentment. Um, I'll show you why you should assign me in the first place, because you know how we do when everybody say no, and then you get the hit record, and then you say, yeah, as soon as I get that hit record, wait till I see. Um, and I was like that with the music business. Mm -hmm with everybody, and now you gotta understand you guys, I did, I was before Jimmy and Terry, I was before LA and Babyface, I was before Lior and Russell, I was before Teddy, I was before all those guys, right here from the Bay Area, those guys learned from, from us. 
Because we had, and we have, what, what they don't have. You got radio right here with KMEL. Mm -hmm. You got distribution, either City Hall or, you know, you got, you know, you got, um, you can sell directly to, to Rasputin and, and we had Leopold. We always had that thing there. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for me, the mistake I made was my ego. I just, you know, I was so mad and I was so in, in the business of, I'm going to show you, you're not going to tell me what to do and not listening. Mm -hmm. But I'm 24, 25 years old. With a Grammy. And signed a Warner Brothers Records too. And, 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 I, and I got millions of dollars, you know what I mean? I, and and I, I got control of everything. And now BMG is doing a deal with me, and EMI is doing a deal with me. And you, and, you know, and my deal was so strong and so different that the record business didn't understand. They couldn't control me. They didn't know how to control me, and I didn't know how to control me. So um, when you, when you become successful, that ego is. I don't know how high drugs get you, but I don't know if they can get you as high as an out of control ego. ego. Yeah. And that's why you see a lot of people that do drugs, even if it's just little drugs, if they do drink, even if it's just a little bit, when you start adding ego to it, and then you start, then now here comes insecurity, because that's what ego is connected with, because as smart as people thought I was, you know, I mean, I, I did some smart things, but there were still things about the music business that I didn't know the, uh, about the etiquette, about how to navigate, how to negotiate, because I'm still only 25 years old. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm going against men that are twice my age. Mm -hmm. And instead of backing up and really studying Mm. what it was and getting and prepare myself for this next test mm. because you are in a series of tests as you walk that you travel this road a series of tests and sometimes you find yourself stuck in the same thing over and over again and you say man I thought I was moving forward and here I am right back again where I started from I don't even like this mm. it's because you failed the test mm. and sometimes you got to get out the circle that you have yourself in mm. Sometimes you have to really stretch and, and you have to be uncomfortable. And self-evaluation is a tough deal.